Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining FDOT's uh, State Road 822 Sheridan Street uh, Resurfacing Restoration and Rehabilitation Project. This project is taking place in the city of Hollywood and Dania Beach. The limits are from North 22nd Avenue to State Road 5, US 1 Federal Highway. Today is Wednesday, March 24th, 2021. I see here Commissioner Shuham has joined. Commissioner, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, we could, if you could um, maybe click the hand raised icon if you'd like to speak and we can unmute you. If not, we can continue with the meeting. Okay. So my name is Rebecca Guerrero. I am the moderator and presenter for today. I am a community outreach specialist with the Cordino Group. I am also a consultant with FTOT for Broward Construction. Just to give you some information on today's meeting format, we will have a question and answer session from 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And again, from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And then an unguided PowerPoint slideshow in between that's gonna take place between 5.30 and 6. All attendees will remain muted throughout the meeting. Attendees are welcome to submit questions or comments using the GoToWebinar control panel at any time. A member of the team will respond during the question and answer session. This virtual public meeting is being recorded and it will be available afterwards on the project website, as well as submitted via email to all registrants. So going on to the GoToWebinar control panel, slide four, uh, for online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. The red arrow points to the question box. You can type a comment or question into that question box, then click send to submit to staff. The blue arrow points to the hand raised icon, which will inform the team that you would like to speak or ask your question verbally. Once the presentation has been completed, we will go ahead and unmute you to voice your concerns. So first we'll go through the questions that are submitted um, via the chat feature and then we can go ahead and answer any questions anybody wants to say verbally. So dialed in attendees are in listen only. Um, if you experience any technical difficulties, whether you're calling in or um, logged in online, you can go ahead and contact the GoToWebinar support at 833-851-8340. So moving on to slide six is the project team. So we have with us today, Hughes Charles, who is the project administrator and also pre uh, presenting alongside me. We also have David Schweiger, the construction project manager, and Julie Jimenez, the engineer of record. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and play our brief project video. Project Overview. The purpose of this project is to improve safety, durability, and rideability. The length of the project is half a mile, and the contractor that will be performing the work is Weekly Asphalt Paving, Inc. Construction is scheduled to start Monday, March 29, 2021. Estimated contract cost is $893,624.97. Contract time is 144 calendar days, but this does not include any weather or holidays that will be added to the contract. Estimated completion for the project is fall 2021. 
I will now be handing over the presentation to the project administrator, Hughes Charles. Thank you, Rebecca. Next, we'll be looking at aerial project view. As mentioned before, the project is on Sheridan Street and the limits are from North 22nd Avenue to South Federal Highway. As far as project activities that we have on this project, we'll first start with the milling and resurfacing of the existing roadway. And the plan is to mill and resurface all four lanes from North 22nd Avenue to South Federal Highway. We'll also be modifying three medians. The first one on North 20th Avenue and Sheridan Street. The second one approximately 380 feet from North 19th Avenue on Sheridan Street. And the last one on North 19th Avenue and Sheridan Street. We'll also be upgrading pedestrian signals and lightings at two separate intersections. The first one on North Dixie Highway and Sheridan Street, and the second one on North 21st Avenue and Sheridan Street. And lastly, we'll be upgrading sidewalks and curb ramps at specific locations from North 22nd Avenue to South Federal Highway in order to meet the American with Disabilities Act requirement. The first media modification that we'll look into is at North 19th Avenue and Sheridan Street. If we look at the existing layout of the median, we have a westbound left turn movement on Sheridan Street and 19th Avenue. So the plan is to add an additional left turn, but this left turn will be an eastbound left turn movement at North 19th Avenue. If you look at below, you'll see the new configuration where we have both an eastbound left turn movement and also a westbound left turn movement at North 19th Avenue. The next median modification that we'll have is a mid-block modification located at approximately 380 feet west of North 19th Avenue. If we look at the existing layout of the median, we'll notice there's an opening where both eastbound and westbound U-turns are restricted. So in an effort to make this area safer, instead of just leaving an opening, we'll be restricting any movement in the median by installing new curbs running adjacent to the inside lanes. We'll also be placing sods in the area where we have the opening inside the curb. If you wonder what the new configuration will look like, please see the layout shown below. The last median modification that we have is on North 20th Avenue and Sheridan Street. If we look at the existing layout of this median, we have approximately three movements. The first movement that we have is the eastbound U-turn movement on Sheridan Street. Second movement is the westbound left turn movement on Sheridan Street. And the last movement that we have is the northbound left turn movement on North 20th Avenue. A safety study of this area was performed and what we observed is that there was a lot of crashes. The first set of crashes involved cars heading eastbound and making that U-turn at the median. Those vehicles were impacted by westbound traffic. We also noticed a set of crashes involving cars going northbound on North 20th Avenue and making that left turn at the median. Those vehicles were impacted by either eastbound traffic or westbound traffic. So in an effort to make this area safer and prevent future crashes, we'll be restricting these two movements. The next best option for cars going north on North 20th Avenue and wanting to make that left turn at the median will be to go to North 19th Avenue, where we'll be providing a new turn lane. And it's the same for cars going eastbound and wanting to make a U-turn at the median. If you wonder what the new configuration of the median at North 20th Avenue will look like, please see the layout shown below. Next, we have the maintenance of traffic. At BOT, public safety is our top priority. As far as work zone signage on a project, we'll be installing advanced warning and project signage all throughout the construction corridor. We'll also be installing lighted message board that will be located at the eastern and western project limits. During construction, there will be ongoing coordination with local agencies and businesses to ensure bus route accessibility and also access at all times are maintained. To list a few of the local agencies that we'll be coordinating with, 
We first have the Broward County Traffic Engineering Division, the City of Hollywood, the City of Dania Beach, the first responders, and also the Broward County Schools. Next, let's look at lane closure details. One lane will be closed in each direction Sunday through Thursday for the following activities. We first have the milling air surfacing of Sheridan Street. The outside operation will be from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. One lane may also be closed in one direction daily, weekdays and weekends for the following activities. We first have the modifications of medians, the upgrading of existing sidewalks and curb ramps, the upgrading of pedestrian signals and lighting, and the hours of operation will be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. During construction, pedestrian access will be maintained at all times. Additional lane closure information will be provided in the weekly traffic report distributed by FDOT. Next, I'll pass it along to Rebecca Guerrero to cover community outreach. For additional information on the project, you can visit the project website located at www d4fdot.com. We also share every Friday a weekly lane closure press release and you can be added to the distribution list to receive that um, by contacting me via telephone 954-940-7605 or via email at rguerrero at corradino.com. So questions and comments can be entered into the chat feature for the team to address um, directly. Throughout the life of the project, questions and comments can be submitted via online or email. My email is rguerrero at corradino.com. And also my phone number is 954-940-7605. So I see here, um, let's see if we have any questions. So far, no questions, but I do see that somebody has their hand raised or had their hand raised. Patricia, um, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you, Patricia, so we can hear your question. Patricia, if you'd like to speak, you can unmute yourself now. I didn't mean to raise my hand. Thank you. Oh, okay. It's, no. it's good to see you, Rebecca. Thank you. Any questions? No, thanks. Okay. I didn't mean to raise. I didn't. I don't understand your process. So, but thank you for the presentation. Yeah, no this uh, touches a little bit of my civic area. So, just was curious. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Shuham, would you like to say maybe a few words? Um, if you'd like to, you can also um, type into the question chat and we can unmute you if you'd like. Hello? Yes, yeah. I just want to say thank you very much, Mr. and I appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Again, if you are having any issues, the control panel should be to the right of your screen. Um, and in the question box, you can then click, um, type in your question into the chat feature and then click send if you'd like us to answer any questions for you, maybe go back to a slide that you might have a question on, or we're happy and here to help.
Okay. Um, so I see that we don't have any questions. So I guess we'll wait just a little more, see if we get any questions in about a minute or two. And if not, we'll go ahead and start the unguided PowerPoint slideshow and then start our next presentation at six. Okay, so I see we have a question from Sam. My business is at 1818 Sheridan Street. Will we have trouble getting out of our building um, or getting to our building, I'm sorry. Um, we have Charles here, um, Hughes Charles will be able to answer your question. Um, hi, Dan. Uh, I have to locate exactly where it's at relative to some of our uh, closures, but I don't believe your, your access will be impacted. Um, most of the work that we're doing is um, within the median. We're doing some, some modifications, as we mentioned in the presentation earlier. And we also have some minor curb ramps that we're working on. But we don't anticipate impacting your, your, your access. Access will be maintained at all times. Thank you, Sam, for that question. Um, I think that's a question that we get a lot during construction is if um, access to businesses or properties will be impacted and we have to maintain that access at all times. And if there's ever any work that we have to do in front of a property, that's something we definitely coordinate prior to us getting there and working. So thank you for bringing that point up. Okay, so this concludes the first portion of our virtual public meeting. Um, thank you guys so much for taking the time and joining us. We're now gonna have an unguided presentation that's gonna continue until our next presentation at 6 p.m. And thank you guys again. Oh, I'm sorry, Charles. Um, Sam, I saw your question now. Thank you. Uh, construction is expected to to be completed in fall of this year. But that won't, it's 144 calendar days, which will take us into fall 2021. Um, but again, if we get any rain days or any holidays, that will add a day or two to the contract.
Hey, project team, this is Billy. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Billy. So I do have a question, and I live right there, uh, okay. just off Sheridan Street. And right now, there is some work that is being done at the railroad crossing. And one of the things that I've noticed about the detour, and forgive me, I don't recall the, the detour that you guys have planned, but what I've observed in the present detour is that traffic that's going westbound on Sheridan from the beach uh, going towards the west. Um, there are signs that are put after Sheridan um, saying that there's a detour before you arrive on the tracks. The tracks are presently closed. So when, what ends up happening is people don't see the detour signs until they've crossed Sheridan Street and they end up driving almost all the way to the tracks and then being having to do a loop back around to US-1 and then finding their way to US-1. But that creates a lot of traffic, unnecessary traffic, uh, that could be avoided if there were some sort of detour signs on the east of US-1, Sheridan east of US-1. Um, this, are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so Charles, do you want to take that question? Yes, um, there's an ongoing project going on right now at the FEC um, line. It's uh, it's independent of us, um, um, but they did make us aware that they were going to be working in this area. This work is anticipated to be completed by um, by the end of this week, um, so they should be done. But in terms of the MOT that they have set up out there, maybe I can reach out to the project team and figure out you know a way for them to you know make it better instead of having cars going all the way to the track you know i'm sure there's a better detour route that um they can um figure out but it's not it's not a dot project no yeah no i'm aware <laughs> yeah, sure. okay. I, don't, I don't need to reach out to them now but i just mentioned it as a lesson learned uh, okay so when you look at your mot plan for your project okay. You recognize that there could be problems it could have done it could have been better than what they have out there now it would prevent kind of take a big going all the way up to the tracks and then having to turn around perfect perfect we definitely will take that into account i noticed that on over the weekend because i was driving the area and i noticed that the track um they kind of shut down the whole fec track so um that, that detour you're talking about i know exactly what you're talking about because i came from the east side and i was heading um, west and i had to make a u-turn and find the detour route so um and good observation thank you all right thank you guys great job i'm gonna have to drop off no problem okay um so i see here that we don't have any more questions that came in via the chat feature and nobody else has raised their hands so we're going to go ahead and conclude the first portion of the presentation and question and answer session. And we're going to go ahead and start playing the unguided PowerPoint. We will be back at six to answer questions again and provide the same presentation. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the second portion of FDOT State Road 822 Sheridan Street Resurfacing, Restoration and Rehabilitation Project. This project is taking place in the city of Hollywood and Dania Beach. And the project limits are from North 22nd Avenue to State Road 5 US 1 Federal Highway. Tonight is March, I'm sorry, Wednesday, March 24th, 2021. If there's any commissioner on the line that would like to speak, you can go ahead and click the hand raised icon and we can go ahead and unmute you. Okay, moving on to slide two. My name is Rebecca Guerrero, and I am going to be your moderator and presenter today. I am a community outreach specialist with the Corradino Group and a consultant to FDOT for Broward Construction. Uh, today's meeting format is going to consist of a presentation question and answer session that's going to take place between 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., which we had that earlier. And now we're on 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. We just finished an unguided PowerPoint slideshow that took place from 5.30 to 6. All attendees will remain muted throughout the meeting. Attendees are welcome to submit questions or comments using the GoToWebinar control pane at any time. A member of the team will respond during the question and answer session. This virtual public meeting is being recorded. It will be available afterwards on the project website, as well as submitted via email to all registrants. The, so now moving on to slide four, the GoToWebinar control panel. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your screen. The red arrow points to the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box, then click send to submit your comment or question to staff. The blue arrow points to the hand raised icon, which will inform the project team that you would like to speak and or ask your question verbally, which once the presentation has been completed, we can go ahead and unmute you so you can voice your concern. Dial in attendees are on listen only mode. Whether you're calling in or if you're logged online, um, if you experience any technical difficulties, you can contact the GoToWebinar support at 833-851-8340. Moving on to slide six, we have the project team. We have Hughes Charles, who is also going to be presenting with me. He is the project administrator that's overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of construction. We also have David Schweiger, the construction project manager. And we have Julie Jimenez, design project manager and the engineer of record. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and play our brief presentation for you. Thank you. Project Overview. The purpose of this project is to improve safety, durability, and rideability. The length of the project is half a mile, and the contractor that will be performing the work is Weekly Asphalt Paving, Inc. Construction is scheduled to start Monday, March 29, 2021. Estimated contract cost is $893,624.97. Contract time is 144 calendar days, but this does not include any weather or holidays that will be added to the contract. Estimated completion for the project is fall 2021. I will now be handing over the presentation to the project administrator, Hughes Charles. Thank you, Rebecca. Next, we'll be looking at aerial project view. As mentioned before, the project is on Sheridan Street and the limits are from North 22nd Avenue to South Federal Highway. As far as project activities that we have on this project, we'll first start with the milling and resurfacing of the existing roadway. 
and the plan is to mill and resurface all four lanes from North 22nd Avenue to South Federal Highway. We'll also be modifying three medians. The first one on North 20th Avenue and Sheridan Street. The second one approximately 380 feet from North 19th Avenue on Sheridan Street. And the last one on North 19th Avenue and Sheridan Street. We'll also be upgrading pedestrian signals and lightings at two separate intersections. The first one on North Dixie Highway and Sheridan Street, and the second one on North 21st Avenue and Sheridan Street. And lastly, we'll be upgrading sidewalks and curb ramps at specific locations from North 22nd Avenue to South Federal Highway in order to meet the American with Disabilities Act requirement. The first media modification that we'll look into is at North 19th Avenue and Sheridan Street. If we look at the existing layout of the median, we have a westbound left turn movement on Sheridan Street and 19th Avenue. So the plan is to add an additional left turn, but this left turn will be an eastbound left turn movement at North 19th Avenue. If you look at below, you'll see the new configuration where we have both an eastbound left turn movement and also a westbound left turn movement at North 19th Avenue. The next median modification that we'll have is a mid-block modification located approximately 380 feet west of North 19th Avenue. If we look at the existing layout of the median, we'll notice there's an opening where both eastbound and westbound U-turns are restricted. So in an effort to make this area safer, instead of just leaving an opening, we'll be restricting any movement in the median by installing new curbs running adjacent to the inside lanes. We'll also be placing sod in the area where we have the opening inside the curb. If you wonder what the new configuration will look like, please see the layout shown below. The last median modification that we have is on North 20th Avenue and Sheridan Street. If we look at the existing layout of this median, we have approximately three movements. The first movement that we have is the eastbound U-turn movement on Sheridan Street. Second movement is the westbound left turn movement on Sheridan Street. And the last movement that we have is the northbound left turn movement on North 20th Avenue. A safety study of this area was performed and what we observed is that there was a lot of crashes. The first set of crashes involved cars heading eastbound and making that U-turn at the median. Those vehicles were impacted by westbound traffic. We also noticed a set of crashes involving cars going northbound on North 20th Avenue and making that left turn at the median. Those vehicles were impacted by either eastbound traffic or westbound traffic. So in an effort to make this area safer and prevent future crashes, we'll be restricting these two movements. The next best option for cars going north on North 20th Avenue and wanting to make that left turn at the median will be to go to North 19th Avenue, where we'll be providing a new turn lane. And it's the same for cars going eastbound and wanting to make a U-turn at the median. If you wonder what the new configuration of the median at North 20th Avenue will look like, please see the layout shown below. Next, we have the maintenance of traffic. At BOT, public safety is our top priority. As far as work zone signage on a project, we'll be installing advanced warning and project signage all throughout the construction corridor. We'll also be installing lighted message board that will be located at the eastern and western project limits. During construction, there will be ongoing coordination with local agencies and businesses to ensure bus route accessibility and also access at all times are maintained. To list a few of the local agencies that we'll be coordinating with, we first have the Broward County Traffic Engineering Division, the City of Hollywood, the City of Dania Beach, the first responders, and also the Broward County Schools. Next, let's look at lane closure details. One lane will be closed in each direction Sunday through Thursday for the following activities. We first have the milling air surfacing of Sheridan Street. 
The house of operation will be from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. One lane may also be closed in one direction daily, weekdays and weekends for the following activities. We first have the modifications of medians, the upgrading of existing sidewalks and curb ramps, the upgrading of pedestrian signals and lighting, and the hours of operation will be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. During construction, pedestrian access will be maintained at all times. Additional lane closure information will be provided in the weekly traffic report distributed by FDOT. Next, I'll pass it along to Rebecca Guerrero to cover community outreach. For additional information on the project, you can visit the project website located at www.d4fdot.com. We also share every Friday a weekly lane closure press release, and you can be added to the distribution list to receive that um, by contacting me via telephone, 954-940-7605, or via email at rguerrero at corradino.com. We've reached the question and comments section of the presentation. Questions and comments can be entered into the chat feature for the team to address directly, uh, or also throughout the life of the project, questions and comments can be submitted to me um, via email or phone. My email is rguerrero at corradino.com. My phone number is 954-940-7605. Also, if you'd like to voice your question or concern, you can go ahead and click the hand raised icon and we can unmute you. So, right now we don't have any questions coming in. Again, if there's any section of the presentation that you um, would like us to go back to, we can. Um, if there's anything you need us to clarify, we're here. We're happy to answer any of those questions. Okay, so I see um why is paving occurring at night hughes can you answer that question for us uh yes um you know just as the 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 night operation for the paving will be from 10 p.m to 4 a.m and the reason is is to you know to reduce the the traffic impact you obviously know that this area is heavily congested during the day and to have full, uh, to have um, you know the, the the operation that we'll be having for the millionaire surfacing will require extensive lane closures, and um, you know at night the the fact that the traffic will be significantly lower, um, that's the reason why we'll be paving during the night instead of during the day. to add on to that Charles that you said that um, the area is heavily congested um, so we want to minimize as much as we can to to the corridor and to commuters so I think it's good that we have that and we're being mindful of everyone
so it says, what are the reasons the existing medians are being closed? Charles, I think you might be on mute. Okay, are you able to hear me now? All right, yeah. perfect. I was unable, I was unable to unmute myself for a little bit. Um, obviously, um, as, as mentioned in a presentation, a safety study of the area was performed. And what we noticed um, was that there was a significant number of crashes at North um, 20th Avenue. And most of these crashes were happening with cars making a left turn on North 20th Avenue and trying to go westbound on Sheridan. Um, so they were either impacted by westbound traffic or eastbound traffic. Um, so uh, we also had car vehicles going eastbound on Sheridan Street and making their U-turn at the median at North 20th Avenue, and they were impacted by westbound traffic. So in an effort to make this area safer, um, that's the reason why we're, we're closing down, not the median completely, but we're shutting down two movements, the U-turn on Sheridan Street going um, eastbound and that left turn movement on North 20th Avenue. Um, so for those vehicles who went out, who, who would like to use that median and make that left turn on North 20th Avenue, they have the option to go to North 19th Avenue or we'll be providing them with um, with a turn lane. Um, so in that, that, that area, they can make the U-turn. And it's the same for vehicles going um, eastbound on Sheridan who would like to make a U-turn at North 20th Avenue. They can just go down to North 19th Avenue and they'll be making, they'll be able to make that U-turn. So we have a question that says, I missed the first half of the presentation. When does it begin and how long is it expected to take? So construction is starting this Monday, March 29, 2021. Um, there's 144 contract days and that doesn't take into account any weather or holidays that might get added to the project. Um, so we're looking at an overall expected completion of fall of this year. Okay, so we got another question that says, can you show the project limits again on your screen? Yes, absolutely. Give me one second. So here are the project limits. They're along Sheridan Street from North 22nd Avenue to US 1 um, State Road 5 Federal Highway. We have another question that says, will you have law enforcement personnel on scene assisting with traffic? Um, Hughes, do the plans call for that or? Uh, typically, um, yes, um, we'll have law enforcement, but only during the paving operation. So it will be at night um, and we'll have a, a police officer there um, assisting, you know, during the lane, during the lane closures, pretty much assisting with the MOT. Yeah, 
And also too, uh, throughout construction, we have a, a distribution list and we keep uh, the law enforcement involved in our link closure information. So they'll receive uh, that information as well. And we'll be coordinating with them throughout construction as needed. We got another question saying, will the bus stops be impacted? If so, will FDOT make accommodations to keep the, so the stops accessible? Uh, yes, um, we'll be coordinating with Broward County um, Transit for any closures to the bus stop that, that um, we're planning. Um, there's a curb ramp that we're installing um, on Sheridan Street, and I believe um, we're, we're going to be impacting that, that bus stop. Um, but most likely, if we're impacting a bus stop, we'll be providing an alternative. Um, to, we're either going to be moving that bus stop um, a little further down or or um, you know, pretty much coordinate with the county and ask them what's what's the best um, option that they would like for for that bus stop. So they will be kept in a loop as far as any um, closure of the stop that we have, and um, we'll make sure that we provide uh, you know another area for um, for uh, for anyone wanting to use that bus stop. We have another one that says, will there be multiple lane closures on Sheridan Street during the day? Will any detours occur? Um, for, for this project, we don't have any detours planned. And as far as lane closures during the day, um, yes, we will have lane closures, but the contractor is um, only allowed to have one lane close in one direction. So we cannot have a, a full closure of, um, of of Sheridan of either eastbound or westbound so for example for the median work he's going to be closing down the inside lane on the eastbound side and also the the, the inside lane on the westbound side um, and he the contractor is only allowed to work in one area so he's not allowed to have multiple lane close along that stretch Perfect. Okay. Again, if you'd like to speak, you can also click the hand raised icon um, and that'll notify the team that you'd like to voice your concerns and we can go ahead and mute you or you can continue to submit your questions via the chat feature. Both options are available. Absolutely, Tara. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I have your information in my distribution list, and I do have Kevin Fulchins as well, but we'll definitely make sure um, to add you to the project distribution list. Okay, so we'll wait another um, two minutes to see if any other questions pop up.
We got one more question. It says, what work will the contractor begin with? Uh, as far as work, the contractor will start with, uh, with the medians. Um, so um, as we mentioned in the presentations, we have uh, three medians that we'll be working on. First one is on North 20th Avenue. Second one is on North 19th Avenue. And the third one is approximately 380 feet west of North 19th Avenue. It's, um, it's a mid block. So contractor will be working in a median as the first operation. Okay, we'll wait about two more minutes. Um, the meeting is supposed to end in about two to three more minutes. So we'll just wait to see if any other um, questions pop up or if anybody else hops on last minute. Um, And just to add, um, again, I'm the community outreach specialist for the project and the main point of contact. So if you guys have any questions or concerns throughout construction, please feel free to contact me via email or my phone number. Um, and we'll we'll get back to you as soon as we can and try to address your concerns um, in the best way we can. With that being said, um, I guess this concludes our uh, virtual public meeting for the project. And again, thank you to everyone who attended. And if you have any questions moving forward, please feel free to contact me. This will be up on the project. The video recording will be up on the project website and we're gonna email it to all registrants who registered for the uh, for the virtual public meeting. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night.